What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sky Bees. So, guys, last episode, we figured out that we need to do some astral sorcery. Yeah, we need to do astral sorcery to get into blood magic so we can make machines, so we can eventually get to applied energistics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been looking at these bees, and the reason why I've been looking at these bees here is because we need marble in order to do astral sorcery, right? So we got a marble bee right there in the center. Now, this is the apiary that we had a bunch of different bees all doing their thing. In fact, we still have them in here, but I have them locked. We have the regular vanilla bee, the gravel, the dust, the sand bee. Now, all of these bees here use a flower, the same one that this marble bee is using. And what I found is when you have multiple bees in an apiary setting like this, trying to go to one specific type of flower, they bump into each other. And eventually they bump into each other enough that they lose interest and they start flying around and they never actually get pollen from the flower and then they never go back into the apiary and they just waste a whole lot of time. Now you see these bees, um, they come out of the apiary and they go directly to their flower, they get pollinated, and they go directly back. There is no time wasting. Um, so it seems like the best way to have these apiaries set up is one bee with one specific type of flower only, and then as many different types that use their own unique flowers in each apiary. Otherwise, you're just going to be wasting a lot of time. Yeah, so it took me a little while to figure out what was going on. I wasn't sure if, like, my marble bee didn't use this kind of flower, or maybe I needed more flowers around, and I was doing a whole bunch of testing, but yeah, it really just comes down to one bee per type of flower, and then you're good to go. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna be moving those other bees out of there. Maybe we'll just stop making gravel and sand. I, I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet. Anyway, so we have the marble bee in there because we need marble for astral sorcery, right? So we are now collecting marble cones down here. We have 112 of them now. Uh, what I wanted to do was swap this centrifuge, just undo this, swap this centrifuge here to stop processing wither combs. And we want to process these so we can start getting marble. So I grabbed a little bit of item cable here. I assume we can do this. I haven't tried putting stuff in from the side. We'll see if this works or not. And then we do this. Is it going? It's going. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, we are extracting the, uh, I guess I can't see on here since there's nothing in there anymore. <laughs> We're extracting the marble combs out into the centrifuge. They're being centrifuged and now we should get, oh, I didn't put the drawer down. I have it in my inventory. We should get marble right into here. There it is. Nice. And then I'll go ahead and lock that as well. Very cool. All right. So we got two marble already. This means we don't have to sift dirt to get, what was it? The stone pebbles and the diorite pebbles like we were having to do before and then craft that into the marble. Yeah, that, I mean, while we can do that and we have like infinite dirt, it's just better if we can directly get the item that we're looking for without a whole bunch of inventory spam. It's just gonna take a minute for all the items that we need. So, last episode, we stacked way up into the sky, right? About 64 blocks up, or 60, I don't remember. Anyway, so we made the Starlight Crafting Altar. It's sitting over here now. Uh, yeah, we made this guy. But this thing doesn't work as we saw before. It has the red bar. So we need a multi-block structure for this to work. So if we go into the astral sorcery book here, let's go all the way back. How do I, how do we go all the way back? So something that I noticed about this book that was recently added, or at least added since the last time I used astral sorcery is the search bar. Oh my goodness. This is a game changer. So if we want to search for a starlight, just type it right there instead of having to play the guessing game of zooming in on the little things in the book. Uh, if you've never done Astral Sorcery before, oh, this thing, this UI has changed too. It's way more 3D. That's cool. Basically, the way this book worked before is you'd have to like hover over something and then zoom in using your mouse wheel or however else you do it and then find the item. It was like, is it in here? No, scroll back out, go over to the next section. Now, just search for it. <laughs> it's so much better. All right, Starlight Crafting Altar. This is what we're looking for. So in order for this to work, it needs to be sitting on a multi-block structure that looks just like this, right? So if we hover over this, this tells us all the items that we need. We can see that it is 
probably 70 or 80 marble blocks worth of stuff. Sooty marble is an item that we're probably gonna have to craft. I haven't looked at the recipe on this. Uh, so sooty marble, yeah, so that's regular marble around coal or charcoal. Looks like you can also craft in Loomis crafting altar, but I'm not sure why you'd wanna do that. Anyway, so yeah, this is what we're gonna do. You have to make eight at a time. How much did we need? It was a bit, wasn't it? So we need to do four, three recipes of sooty marble in order to get that. All right, well, we got a little bit of time to wait for all of that marble to come in. I'm not gonna bore you guys <laughs> with waiting on it, so we'll be right back when we're ready to go. All right, well, we're just about here with the multi-block structure. Just need to add it in this last pillar and this last chisel and torch just to make sure nothing spawns up there. And then we're missing, obviously, our crafting table in the center. Now, I went ahead with the marble combs. I took half a stack and I threw it into the other three different centrifuges we had down there, so that went just a little bit faster. Yeah, I was going I was going pretty slow without that. <laughs> so, yeah, I sped it up about four times by doing that, uh, and we were able to collect a lot of stuff, and I decided that I want to put the altar one block, well, I guess on top of the ground, so one block up, and then I use some of the extra marble we have just to make some marble stairs to go around it. I think it looks a little bit nicer, and then we don't have to jump, right? So we can just walk up onto the altar, so there we go, that should be complete, and yeah, this bar looks like we are fine now. The only thing is, we don't have any starlight. Now, that might be a problem, <laughs> because we aren't really high up in the sky. We'll see how this goes. I might have to do something in order to make this better. Uh, oh, I don't have the linking tool on me. Yeah, uh, we'll see how this works, how much starlight we get in this particular setting. We might have to do some things I don't quite know just yet. Resonating one, that's not what I'm looking for. The linking tool is though. Yeah, so the sun is on the way down, so we should be able to see something happening here. As long as we don't have the red bar though, that's really good. But if we can't craft anything on this altar, yeah, we're still gonna have a problem. Oh, look at that, look at that. Okay, so uh, just with the altar here and this one crystal linked, we are over halfway full. That is fantastic, great. So we can get rid of this, we can get rid of that. So the blood altar required a starlight crafting altar uh, with all of this stuff, demon will, sooty marble. Hey, you know what? We even have three sooty marble remaining because we needed 21 for the for the, the altar, for the multi-block, and you have to make eight at a time. There should be three in here somewhere if I could find them. Here they are. So there's the three of that. We needed one bucket. What else did we need for this thing? Uh, the blocks of steel. I don't remember, do we have steel blocks in here? I feel like I made steel blocks, but I don't see them in here. We do have some steel ingots. We have lots downstairs, so we can go ahead and grab those as well. I haven't taken a look on how we're doing on these resources. We're just getting so much of it. Oh, we got so much. Okay, so we needed, what is it, 36 for four blocks. Oops, I just put, oh no, we have 36 here. Okay, what else do we need here? Uh, the bucket, the demon will, and then uh, four redstone blocks. So we should have pretty much everything good to go. We just need to craft the ingots into these blocks here. Like a so. And then four redstone. I think that's it, right? Oh no, the demon will. Uh, where did I put the demon will? Right here, because why not? Why not put it in the, the wood chest? <laughs> Can we have digital storage now so I don't have to like separate things? Oh, look at that. The thing is completely full. That's really good. All right. So if we do this and this, it's all in there. It says that we can make it. So if we take the resonating wand and we boop it, there it is. We did it. Blood magic. Quest completed. Blood altar. Nice. Okay. So now that that's done, we can get that out of here. So the blood altar required different tiers, I do believe. So we're trying to make the steel casing, which is steel blocks in a tier two blood altar. Uh, I don't think you can see the altar in GEI. I think we have to do this book here. So tier two altar, if I remember correctly, is just eight blank runes around an altar with the altar sitting on top of it, or maybe it's nine, I can't remember. Um. So blood altar, tears of slates, the blood altar. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna have to figure out where it shows. Oh, here we go, tier two blood altar. 
The tier two blood altar, which has a total of eight runes. Yeah, so it's just a blood altar on top and then on the ground you have eight runes surrounding it and we can just use blank runes, I'm pretty sure. Blank rune, let's take a look at what this costs. So this is diorite granite, accepts any stone block. Okay, and then we need to get ourselves a weak blood orb. So that's something else that we're gonna need. So let's bookmark this. Uh, weak blood orb, we'll bookmark that. And of course we're gonna need blank slates. Weak blood orb, we need 2000 life points in the blood altar with a diamond in order to make that. Okay, that's easy enough. The blank slate is 1000 LP uh, to make that. So we're gonna need eight of those. So that's gonna be a little bit. So I guess the next step is to figure out how we are gonna make LP. All right, so to put LP into our blood altar, if we look in the blood magic book, if we go to the blood altar section, we just click next a few times, tells us right here, in order for you to add life essence measured in LP, you first have to craft a sacrificial knife, and that's the recipe right here. So let's go ahead and craft it. So that is five glass, a gold, and an iron. Pretty simple. So there we go, a uh, sacrificial knife. Basically, you take this and you just right click it next to the altar. I don't remember how far away you can be, like five blocks or something like that, but I like this stand just right next to it so I can see what's going on. So just right click it and then, uh, yeah, it adds in there. So we just right click this a few times. If you right click it enough, you will kill yourself. So don't do that. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Uh, thankfully, we have these apples which fill up our saturation all the way. I wish you could eat them while you're still full though, but unfortunately, you cannot. Um, so I'll just go ahead and keep doing this a little bit because we want quite a bit of, of LP life essence, life points in there. All right. Whoa. I got a little carried away there. I forgot that my, my health hasn't healed all the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, so first thing that we want to do, let's throw a diamond, there, a diamond in there. That's going to use 2000 of the life essence fluid that we have in here. Right? 2,000 of that, and that's going to convert into a weak blood orb. Okay. Once we have the weak blood orb, we can start crafting the blank slates, right? No, uh, the blank runes, right? So we need the weak blood orb, we're going to need the blank slates, and then we're going to need a whole bunch of stone on top of all that. Well, there we go. There's the first weak blood orb. Okay, so you can right-click this, and then that... I don't think that adds into the altar. That adds into your uh lp network which is different um but yeah that also assigns the blood orb to your player name it now says current owner hypnotized all right cool um so let's go ahead and eat some more we are going to need how much for these blank slates 1000 each so we're gonna need 8000 uh, life points in here eight, eight buckets essentially in here in order for us to uh do everything that we need to do now there is ways to increase the amount of life essence that you put into the altar using i think it's called the tranquility altar i think it's just a little bit too much of a setup for us to do right here it's pretty easy for us to just spam this and get the eight buckets uh later on depending on how much blood magic that we have to do if we're having to spend an enormous amount of time here at the blood altar filling it up i will definitely look into the incense altar so we can improve how much that we're putting into this at a time but for right now i feel like this is gonna work just fine for me one more Ooh, getting a little close there yeah so we're almost at eight buckets so that's pretty good um anyway so let's put in our first stone block into this thing so that's going to use 1000 life points looks like it's draining quite quickly actually which is pretty good so that means it's crafting fairly quickly or maybe maybe not i don't know it looked like it was going faster Anyway, uh, so we can do that and then put the next one in. So there is our first blank slate. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to camp this for a little bit, get this stuff done, and then we'll be right back. All right, so I just got done cooking up the stone and I crafted the blank runes. We are just about ready to upgrade our altar to a tier two simply by putting these blocks in place. Does it say anywhere if it's tier two? I don't think it does. I think you have to hold a specific item in your hand for you to know that the altar is actually tier two. <laughs> uh, it shows somewhere in here, I'm sure. I think it's a divination sigil is what we need. 
Uh, Tears of Slay's Blood Altar, Soul Network. Yeah, I'm not really sure where you're gonna find that information. I know it's in here somewhere. Utility blocks and items, maybe it's in this thing. Well, anyway, um, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and assume this is tier two. And I guess the uh, most obvious way to see if this is a tier two is to try crafting something that requires a tier two altar. So do we have 5,000 in here? We have 3.4, so that's not enough. So I do need to spam this a few more times and try and get 5,000 in there where we had now, oh, 5.6, okay, perfect. All right, so we can just get ourselves one steel block and if it starts crafting, then we know we are good to go. Oh, do I not have any steel up here? I guess I took the exact amount that I needed previously and never <laughs> brought any more upstairs. All right, well, let me grab, how about two stacks of that? We'll make a few blocks. I know we need to make a few of these machine frames. So let's just grab a little bit of extra here. Click the wrong thing. Then where, what, what's going on? Where did my stuff go? All right, so there's our steel blocks there. Uh, let's see what happens if we put it in there. I assume we are good to go. I don't know why we wouldn't be. And if we put that in there, it looks like it's cooking. So it is using stuff. Great. That's awesome. So that means we can start making a steel casings, right? So the steel casing is used in this recipe to make the metallurgic infuser, and it's also used to make the enrichment chamber, but we need the metallurgic infuser to make these basic control circuits. Mm -hmm. All right, so I am gonna get some stuff done here. We'll be back. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and I made two steel casings and then we should have everything together to make some of these machines that we need. So metallurgic infuser, let's go ahead and craft that. So there we go. And then we have a good portion of everything that we need for the enrichment chamber in my inventory as well, except I need two more redstone actually. Uh, so now we have everything in there for that. <laughs> but in order to, to make that, we have to make these basic control circuits. So let's look at doing that. So we have to grab some of the power that we are making down here, similar to what we did for our metal press until we can get into a better energy source. I think I'll just stick this over here for now. So metallurgic confuser, we'll just do that. It gets power directly, we're full, we're ready to go. Okay, so we need to take osmium ingots and, conf and uh, infuse them with redstone, right? In order for us to make these basic control circuits. This says it uses 20 millibuckets of redstone and you just put dust directly in there. We can do this more efficiently later. So one redstone equals 10, so we need two redstone per. So I'll put the other two in there so we can do both of these osmium ingots. Yep, and then there are also upgrades for this, which I don't know what they cost right now, but they're kind of beyond what we can do at the moment, but we can speed this up significantly in the future, which I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, all right, so there is our two basic control circuits. Easy. So now, can I get through here? Now we can go and make ourselves the other machine that we want to make, which is this enrichment chamber. There it is. Awesome. Okay, so we have the enrichment chamber done. We have the basic control circuits. We have the steel casing. Pure Fluix Crystal is the item that we were trying to make originally, and that is gonna go into making the semi-controller, right? All right, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We won't be able to do applied energistics today, but we can look at making these pure Fluex crystals. So in order to do that, we need to get ourselves Fluex dust and then put it into the enrichment chamber, it looks like. Okay, uh, I don't remember if we have Fluex dust or not. Let's see what we got here. Do we have Fluex? Oh, we do. And we needed how many of these? Four, wait, four. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a few more. Let's make 16. I don't know how much energy this is gonna take, uh, but we don't need these right this second. So we can just kind of put them in there and just let it do its thing. All right, so the enrichment chamber, slap it down. We are good to go. Put that in there. This is using 20 FE per tick. Let's take a look. Mechanism, and we want energy upgrades. Can we? Did they change the icons or am I just not seeing it? Energy unit. Uh, mechanism upgrade. Okay. I guess they did change the way these things look. So energy upgrade. That requires infused alloy. Le hold left shift 
four details increases energy efficiency and capacity okay so that requires gold dust and infused alloy which is iron and one red stone to make that all right well we could do that and drop down the power requirement from 20 fe way down low uh, these machines used to take up to eight of each different type of upgrade like that, the efficiency and the speed. Uh, I think you could probably drop it down to like one or two FE per tick. I'm not sure what it actually would drop it down to all the way. But anyway, I digress. Um, let's take a look at what else we can do here to get ourselves towards the ME controller. So now we have the ability to do the pure fluix crystals. Uh, we need steel plates, which I think we already crafted using the metal press down below. Skystone block, this might be the next thing that we should look at. So in order to make skystone blocks, we need skystone. And you get that by putting skystone dust into lava to get the skystone. Now, we did something similar to this before with obsidian, right? Mm, did we do the sky stone already? I honestly can't remember. Maybe we should go take a look at what our resources are. We might have done this already. What do we have here? Or did we use that to make netherrack? Maybe we did that to make netherrack. Well, either way, we can use that same setup that we have there to make the sky stone. So let's just grab like, I don't know, a stack of the sky stone dust. You know what? All that sky stone dust is downstairs, isn't it? Should be right here. So if we take this, oh, I don't have a way to put it into this. I guess I can just hold down a right click. If we right click it into the lava, it should just turn right into sky stone. And we have lots of lava saved up since I turned off our obsidian maker. Yeah, so all the lava <laughs> is in the pipes and it's in these things here, all the different crucibles. So just hold down a right click and now we have a stack of sky stone. Very good. Uh, while I'm down here, let's go ahead and grab our steel plates, which should be in this chest as well. Just trying to get everything together. Steel plates, all right. And then we have these guys. Oh, wait a second. It said pure Fluix crystal. It said that we can put in Fluix dust to get this. All right, yeah, all right. So we just gotta run those through twice, awesome. All right, so we'll let that do its thing and we'll get our pure Fluix crystal. Now, the next part of this, in order for us to continue on, is we're gonna have to make uh, the crafting bench that this is made on. So that's the advanced crafting table. In order to make that, we need the basic one. In order to make that, we have to have these different crafting components. So we need the catalyst, which is four of those, and then these components, and then the other stuff is pretty easy to do. So luminescence, I think, is the one thing that is difficult for us to make. And then we need the black iron slate, which I'm pretty sure we've already made, right? Yeah, we have the black iron ingots. Let's, let me double check. Is that different? Yeah, black iron ingot, metal press mold plate, turns into the black iron slate. So luminescence is the one thing that we haven't made yet. So that's redstone, gunpowder, and glowstone. Uh, we have plenty of glowstone. We have lots of gunpowder right here, actually. Lots of gunpowder, and then uh, redstone is the only other component to this, so let's make a bunch of this stuff. One full stack, I think that's fine. All right, so we have that. Uh, so now we need iron ingots and the black iron slate. So I guess I should count up how many of these different components that we need. So each one of these basic components is one, so that's four, five, and then I think it's four more here, right? So we need a total of nine of those in order to make one basic crafting table. We need two of those, so we're gonna need 18 total. And then each one of these requires another one, so that's another nine, so I guess 27? Did I math that correctly? Hopefully I math that correctly. So let's just do, yeah, let's do 27. I don't wanna have extras of those. So we'll put 27 of those downstairs in order to get turned into uh, the plates. I think we have the right, metal press mold in there right looks like it so we'll throw those in here and easy all right well that's a little bit of crafting that that needs to take place the rest of the stuff is pretty simple so i'll go ahead and craft that up and then we'll be back all right so i'm in the process of crafting our advanced crafting table i forgot to look at the quest book so i didn't click this check mark which is a check mark task. I didn't click that before doing the first table, so we don't have the quest completes for these. 
Uh, we're doing them right now for the gold one. Uh, anyway, so we are missing this advanced catalyst so I can make that, right? And then we need four more of these. I think we should have everything good to go. So yes, it was 27 of these black iron slates. I did math that correctly. <laughs> there we go. Advanced crafting table. Sweet. So we can make that. What are we missing now for the Emmy controller? A lot of stuff. Uh, we still need sky stone block. We made sky stone, but I think you have to smelt that, right? Or can you, can you craft that using the stone cutter? It doesn't look like it. it looks like you have to smelt it. The sky stone used for anything in particular. You can crush it. All right, I think we're gonna take the existing sky stone that we have, and we're just gonna smelt that. So let me go ahead and throw that into our furnaces over here. Man, I cannot wait until we get electric furnaces going. I mean, the vanilla furnaces work fine and everything like that. It's just annoying because you want to speed it up. So you have to use multiple furnaces and clicking into so many things. Oh my goodness. All right, so that's all done. So any controller, what we are missing right now is the engineer's processor and this machine casing, which it looks like we can craft up using quartz enriched iron and some steel plates. Well, we know how to make those. Uh, quartz enriched iron. Uh, let's take a look at that. Steel, let's see, quartz enriched iron. That was for, what was I making? The uh, machine casing here. So that requires this. I know we have the B. We can do iron plus nether quartz to make that. How many of those do we need? Just four of those? Maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I will just craft it using iron. Man, we are running low on iron. Uh, using iron and nether quartz in the alloy kiln. So we just have to do two recipes of that. So that is six iron and then two of these. Right, and I think we had fuel down there. I hope we do for our alloy kiln. Do we? There's our electrum. All right, so yeah, we'll just cook that up. And then we should be able to make this machine casing. So engineering processors, these are the last components that we need in order to do this. And that means we have to make ourselves an inscriber. So the inscriber does require some of these Fluex crystals, and that's really not bad. Um, so getting back to this processor that requires a printed engineering circuit, the printed silicon, and I think we have to have a specific mold, these presses. How do we make the presses? Basic crafting table. So I do have to make another basic crafting table in order to do this, which is fine <laughs> because I didn't get the quest complete for the first one. Uh, all right, so I'll just go ahead and craft this up real quick. Yeah, it looks like that's pretty simple to do. Charge surface quartz, do we have? Not sure if we have that. Looks like we have to do crushed sky stone or uh, enrichment chamber if we had the ore. I'm not sure we have that ore. So we'll probably end up doing some crushed sky stone. All right, so I just crushed down two stacks of sky stone and I sifted it and we ended up with these items here. So some Surtis Quartz Seed, Nether Quartz Seed, some Charged Surtis Quartz, and then a few stacks of Surtis Quartz Crystal. Pretty cool. All right, so we can now look at making... Oh, that has to be done. You know what? I don't think I actually... Oh, I do have these. Okay. Uh, I think I need to craft up four more of these steel plates. So yeah, we made the another basic crafting table. I need one stone block. Let's grab that. And we can make ourselves... This guy, the machine casing. Awesome. Quest completed machine casing. So under applied energistics, this quest right here, this is just a task, a check mark task. So we have that done now. And that has unlocked these other quests here for us to do. Uh, one of them is the inscriber. And we're going to need the inscriber in order to make any of the circuits for applied energistics. Uh, we should have everything ready to go for that now. So there's the inscriber. Okay, very good. Uh, one thing I do need to do is we need to take some steel ingots, which I'm not seeing any in here. We have those. We have some steel blocks. I need to take some steel ingots and we need to turn that into more steel plates. So let's get that rolling right now so we can have that ready to go for when we eventually are able <laughs> to craft this up. All right, so that's cooking. Uh, so we have the inscriber. 
We need to make the inscriber engineering press. So that is charged surdis plus some steel ingots. Let me grab some more steel while I'm down here. I think we have everything to, ready to go in order to make that. So that should be a pretty simple thing. So that is made over here, like so. So there's the inscriber engineering press. Uh, I guess we need a silicon press as well. I don't know what the recipe for this one is. Looks very similar. All right, let's see if we can craft that. The silicon press, there it is, very good. All right, so we had enough charged Certus Quartz from those two stacks to craft those up so we can get rid of that stuff. So we need to start making silicon. I don't know how we're making silicon in this pack. Looks like one converts into another and this is made by smelting Certus Quartz dust. There's also silicon bees, so we'll probably want to get those set up eventually. And then the printed engineering circuit is with diamonds. Okay, so let's cook up some of this stuff. We'll just do eight of those so we can use one full piece of coal or charcoal, whichever. That goes in there, that goes in there. We can grab our sky stone that we've smelted up earlier. We'll have these ready to go. Guys, we're getting closer and closer, closer than I was expecting to be on this, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, so that gets turned into this, I think. Maybe we want the applied energistic silicon. I'm not gonna craft that into something different just yet. So we have the silicon, oh, I didn't grab the diamond. Uh, one diamond, right here, okay. And again, we need to go borrow from our power source down here. Now I'm pretty sure the inscriber can just use regular power. Let me just throw that right there. It got a thing in the center. What's going on? Oh, we got a honeycomb in there. Okay, so we probably don't want it right there. Let me let me go ahead and move this. Maybe right here would be better. I assume it gets power from the back. Looks like that's connected. Okay, so let's do an engineering press plus a diamond. And yep, things are going. So that's fantastic. All right, so there is a printed that, and then one of these. That's going. Oh, I did not grab one piece of redstone. I guess I needed a little bit more than one piece of redstone. Yeah, we needed a total of four of these engineering processors in order to make ourselves the ME controller, right? Four of those. So there is our last one, and boom. So we now have everything ready to go to make this ME controller. I actually wasn't expecting us to be able to get through that this episode, but I guess we've gone a little bit longer than normal, <laughs> which is fine, but we are able to do this. Oh, I need the pure Fluex crystal. There we go. And boom, Emmy controller. We did it. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, this thing needs power in order to operate. I don't know how much power that is, but yeah, we are definitely going to have to look at upgrading our power system in order to keep this going, but it does have a cool little glow if you haven't seen it before, when it does have power. <laughs> so that's really awesome. Yep. Uh, so Applied Energistics is in our future. Digital storage is just around the corner. I'm gonna have to figure out what it costs, like material wise, in order for us to get the storage disks and all of that stuff. But we are gonna go ahead and call it an episode here. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.